Hello everybody, welcome back to this thing that I still haven't named even though this is episode 4. I too am going crazy not having this completely organized. Also, I look like a clown because it's Ash Wednesday and I have to wear this because I gotta go to mass. Shout out to all my Catholics. I'm hungry and I'm having a bad hair day and I need my glasses. So this combination is just a mess, but here we are. I look like I would every day when I'm teaching as opposed to when I'm coaching, so... Today we're gonna talk about speed, and this obviously has a lot to do with sport. How do we develop this? I've never met an athlete say, I'm fast enough. I've never met a coach who said, yeah, I'll take that slower athlete over there as opposed to that faster athlete over there. Thank you very much. It just doesn't happen. Every athlete needs more speed needs more power regardless of sport. So today let's discuss how non-sprinter athletes can get faster. That is field sport athletes, court sport athletes, racket athletes, basically athletes who don't run on the track. That's what we're talking about today. How do we get fast? So as an example for why we need speed, think about a time, any time in sport where you were just one step behind. Being one step ahead would completely change the game. And of course your first reaction was probably, shit, it was just one step. It was just one millisecond. Well, if you were a little bit faster, you would have been in there in time. You need speed. Everybody needs speed. Duh. One of the common beliefs in training science is if you suck at something, do it more often. In sprinting, that's not always the case. Yes, if you're not sprinting, yes, you should do it more often, but how often? The problem with speed and power training is that more is not better. Less is actually more, but more is also better. So what's the balance? So let's start with how do you not get faster? First of all, you stop lifting weights completely. We'll get to that. Second of all, you get crazy and you overdo it and you wear yourself out because speed, sprinting, which is the most aggressive thing the body can do, is very exhausting to the central nervous system, which controls essentially everything about the body. So if we exhaust that, we lose our ability to exert as much power. Thirdly, don't listen to your coach. How to get faster. If you're not sprinting at all, if all you're doing is game practice, team training, four by fours, one-on-ones, that's some speed work, but you need to actually be sprinting with good technique, with rest periods in between, with intensity, and with intention. Why? Because it's a controlled environment. That's a way to increase your maximal speed and improve your technique so that you're more economical. The central nervous system is a very sensitive thing, but it can adapt incredibly well. So what we wanna do is give you just enough reps with just enough rest to adapt to becoming faster. Then we put you back in that game scenario and you're able to sprint faster because your body is capable of achieving a higher maximum velocity. You are able to run faster. Secondly, train at the appropriate intensity. If your coach says, we're gonna run at 70% and you're going at 100%, you can't hit 100% of 25 reps. I'm sorry, you just can't. You need a lot of rest in between. If your coach says 100%, you need to run at 100%, okay? Maximal sprinting is 95 to 100% that makes you fast. It does not help to go into a maximal speed session where you're supposed to be sprinting 95 to 100% to get that adaption for maximum velocity and only hit 80% and then coast. Always hit your intensity that's prescribed for the session. Three, don't abandon lifting weights, okay? Don't neglect the weight stack. It's very often said that weights make you slow or that mass makes you slow, and yes, that's true. However, that equation doesn't entirely add up because lifting weights does not equal gaining mass. So to say that lifting weights equals becoming slow, that's actually not the truth. What makes an athlete slow is gaining too much mass, which yes, is indeed heavy, then you are playing against gravity, and two, having a restricted mobility. Sprinting is an upper body rotational exercise and you need mobility in the legs to even get your feet up high enough, your knees high enough, you need hip mobility. If you're working with a competent strength coach, that should never happen because we don't train like that in the preparation and the competitive phase. Strength training, especially training maximal strength and then some accessory, especially upper body training, can help make you faster because it gives you the ability to apply more force against the ground. And it also makes you more resilient. For example, you need hamstring strength in order to sprint. Your hamstrings and glutes take a huge load during sprinting. And unfortunately, we do see a lot of hamstring strains in field sports because the hamstrings aren't quite strong enough to keep up with the demands of sprinting. Those two work together. Sprinting can complement the weights and the weights can complement the sprinting. We're not powerlifting, we're not bodybuilding. That's, that's not how it works. If that's what you're given in season, you need to find a new coach. Sorry. For the other stuff, you need to recover. Sprinting is a very high CNS activity. Your body heals itself when you get into regeneration mode, when you recover, when your nervous system could calm down. That's called the parasympathetic nervous system. We'll do another video about that another time. Once your parasympathetic nervous system is activated, your body can then begin to recover recover, heal, and improve itself. And that's when you get that adaption and actually get better after you've recovered. Seven to nine hours, good quality sleep. Eating appropriately, keeping your stress low, having a good time in life, okay? All of those things can help you recover. Lastly, listen to your coach. If you have a question, 
especially if your coach knows that you need speed, then talk to your coach and express, hey, this is a little bit too much. Hey, should I be doing something else? If you have a competent strength coach, they should be putting a program together that actually complements you specifically and your needs. Stop changing the exercises. Stop changing the intensity. Just please stop. Yeah, okay, maybe that's a petty peeve of mine because I am a coach. All right, so those are my top five tips for how to get fast for non-sprinting athletes. Some of my favorite resources are Charlie Francis, Henry Delaney, uh, Hunter Charneski, Derek Hansen, Hank Kretchenoff, Dan Pfaff, Altus, so many resources for speed. So if you need some of those, look up some of those names or drop me a comment below and I would be more than happy to forward you some. Until I figure out what the name of this thing is, we'll see you later. Until next time.